Let me welcome you to the smoke box. Windows up, couple in rotation. Hot box out. What's up? This is Dr. Green Thumb here. Another smoke box. Be real. TV with my special guest Carter of Air. I know you're getting tired of waiting. So tired. Just hope you had the patience. Cause I'm always going somewhere. And if we could do it all again. Hello, hello. You know what I'm saying he's chilling, and we're about to, you know, um, blast these off. I'm very Make excited. Funky field tips. Uh, these are primate uh, funky field tips, you know. And uh, I don't necessarily know what flower we're smoking right now. What's inside of here? It, it might be, you know, I know it's from Daddy's Pipes, but you know, they've, they've okay. been in Daddy's collections that they've always given us an array of, uh, you know, flowers to chief out in, in this here smoke box. And, you know, beggars can't be true. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Ah, it is a nice flavor, though, I can tell you this. Word up, man. So, you guys have been doing a lot of shit. I mean, you know, busy, busy, busy. You know, you guys were did a lot of touring. You guys are putting out a new album right now. Yes. And you have a new single currently. Yes. And motherfuckers are feeling it. Yeah, I, I would hope so. I mean, that's the plan. How are you feeling that they're feeling it? I'm excited. I'm very excited. I think... Uh, I think this new album is is good. I mean, we were quiet for the past year and a half. Right. We were off the grid. No one really knew what the fuck was going on. Yeah. We weren't asking us what you know what we were doing. But um, I'd say this new album is. I'm psyched for it because like we're breaking the silence. We're back on the road. We're gonna be crushing it in September. Um, coming back out here on the West Coast, doing the whole U.S., doing Europe next summer. Like. Right. I don't Just know. I'm I'm excited to finally. I've been quiet for too long. I've been sitting smoking supposed for weeks. Yeah, that's long. that's it's terrible. You, that's got to feel crazy. Where where you know, you, if you're a creative person, if you're an artist, you, you know, you take some time off, and once you get that bug back in you, where you want to like put something Be out. moving and like yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it must feel good to finally get get that shit out there and and uh, start the whole cycle again. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Is it, yeah, it's crazy to be so quiet. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, you what, gotta convince people to pay attention again. What was know? for? What was uh, the reason for the time off? Was it just that you guys were like doing so much touring and shit, like you needed a little break or something like that? Yeah, we were touring hard for like two years straight. Yeah, I we were. We point. we and then it kind of like before you know it, before you like actually get to get comfortable and relax, gotta write again. Gotta write again. You got more shit. You gotta keep it pumping. So I'd say it was just kind of like we fell right back into the cycle. Right. Had to wake up. And uh, we actually moved. I so I'm born and raised in Boston. Right. Just moved down to Brooklyn last year. Um, so it's kind of like. Did you get any flack for, for being from Boston? Nah, there? I don't know. We don't really. Because you know Celtics and of Red course. Sox. I mean sports. Let's not even talk. Yeah. But in terms of like the whole, I don't know. We never really hardly represented Boston as like our that. thing. Uh, you just represented your music. Your right. Songs. I mean, a lot of people. And for the longest time, just thought we were West Coast because of the sound. Because of the sound, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, you know, the rock, the reggae rock is, you know, central here, I guess, you know, or how, whatever fusion you want to call that. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, a lot of this it is, is here. This is the home of it. So yeah, I guess that would make sense for people to to confuse it like that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't think anybody really, you know, it's never like we were, you know the Boston kids, you know, so yeah. luckily, luckily we made the switch and, but right when we moved in, that was like inspiration overload, you know? Yeah. Cause You're making the transition, You're totally new York. place, learning, yeah, learning the city. Um, so we were like, we got to write, we got to get back in the studio. And what, what, you know, I mean, I know you guys met at a very young age. You guys met in what elementary school? Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, did you guys, uh, did you guys have like, what was what was the influence for for you guys choosing to do the reggae shit? You know the well, it's, yeah. I guess a fusion. I mean, what would you guys right. call it? I don't know. We've always I, it switches every day. What we call yeah, it. because I mean, we had the same problem back in the '90s with hip hop and alternative. And, right. You know that that borderline. Well, what what do they call this shit? And it's just music at the base. Right. But you know, with what you guys do, it's definitely a fusion of like some rock elements and definitely mm -hmm. reggae elements. Yeah. You know, but a different the different style of reggae. Some is more ska, some is more roots, some is more dance hallish. Right. You know? So I mean, in terms of like, I mean, the coolest thing was what brought David and I together 
was we both bumped the red hot chili peppers <laughs> hard. Right. We fucked them so, so heavy. So that's kind of what started our friendship. And then I got heavy into reggae and more like not so much rooty stuff, but more kind of like where we are now. Right. I was big into Sublime, of course, right. and Slightly Stupid was huge for me. 311 I, I fucked with because they kind of had that heavily they were on the rock, line too, yeah. punk kind of feel too. Yeah. Um, but then I, I was always into hip hop. So we just kind of like let it speak for itself. You threw that third element in. Yeah, and for us, I mean, we've never really tried to like aim in a certain direction. And the f most fun thing was putting out a bunch of like acoustic chill stuff. Right. And then like doing an Avicii remix. Just That's to fuck right. with people. I don't know, why not, you know? Why not? I mean, music's there to, to experiment and do do different things. You don't necessarily have to do what, what's expected of, expected of right. you. Right. Know? I know we don't like, I don't want to be pigeonholed, nah. like right off the bat. So we've, I mean, of course there's the pros and cons to that. Right. But like, it's been good so far. You know, <laughs> But you don't pigeonhole yourself to just music. You also fuck with the culinary. Uh, yeah, things, right? okay. Yeah, I mean, I realize when I'm home, first of all, I can't, I can't. Home and stoned? You come up I'm with some of your best shit then? Yeah, and I can't, I can't afford to be eating out all the time, especially in New York. There's all that temptation. So, let's see, what did I make? Last week I did panko breaded chicken. <laughs> um over like a bed of like greens <laughs> with these quinoa potato like pancakes. You're making a lot of people hungry. As Sorry as guys, I'm making stuff. myself hungry. Fuck it, me too. Uh, <laughs> and then some like asparagus on the side. It was. So you went to school for this? This was. Oh no. Oh no, this is just something you I'm in up. school up here. It's right. working for me. Um, nah. Did, did you ever consider? Crazy shit on the internet. Did you ever consider doing that? Because you got like a knack for it. I can see myself getting into that now. I mean, we started straight out of high school, so I didn't really have the option. We started in high school. So, when so I didn't really ever feel like I had an option of doing anything besides music. So let me ask you this, because when, you know, when Slightly <coughs> Stupid goes out, and shout out to my boys, those are my those are my boys. We've done many shows together. Of course. Smoked much weed. They, they, do these, um, they do these cookouts at the end of each show where they got their boy barbecuing, and you know. They, oh yeah. Was like, do you? <coughs> Do you get on the grill and cook the shit for for everybody because you want to, or, or is that something <coughs> you just do for you at home? I keep it more of a personal thing, more of a personal therapeutic thing. thing. Do they ever ask you? They'll ask me. But you say fuck that. I'll though. do some rubs. Just, you uh, know, I'll, I'll do some simple shit. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Crowd pleasers. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. You can't get too crazy. You know, when you got people feeding for like hot dogs. Because burgers. yeah, exactly. Because then you're not really showing your skill. You're just slapping that shit on right. the wheel right there at that point. Yeah. No. But you know. Yeah. I'm looking forward to learning more. Fuck it, man. That's what it's about: absorbing, learning, and and keep it pushing. And uh, you know, in in regards back in the music, you yeah. guys got the you got the new single out that's burning up. Yes. And yes. You guys get tremendous hittage on fucking YouTube with your, uh, with pretty much all your shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, is, I mean, you know, th is radio even necessary to you at this right. point? That's always the question. I don't know. I'm really torn on that whole thing. To be I mean, honest. if you could get both, fuck of yeah, course, have of it, course, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I look at a lot of the careers that I would ideally like to emulate, and like. Radio was a huge part, regardless. Yeah, I mean that—that's always going to be a fixture in um, in what it, as it relates to music, promoting music and putting out music. Free radio has just always right. been there, and they're not going anywhere because it's free. Um, but now you got YouTube and, and various you know platforms that you don't necessarily need radio, but fuck YouTube being the biggest one. I mean it's now the, the the place where it could make you a star right you know yeah i mean socials have played so heavily for right. us i mean you got to be on the networks like grinding as hard as possible because you can like firsthand like tailor what you're showing people you know did you go to that vidcon no well i guess youtube has this thing where they have all the popping people of 
of YouTube to get the millions and okay. upon millions of hits and they just had it here. It's just like everyone's there? All the YouTube songs all are the, there? All the YouTube The Vine kids? All the young, they're all there? All the youngsters. Okay. I don't know if I want to be there. Yeah, I don't know. Because it's too crazy for me, <laughs> little bastard. No, but um, yeah, I mean, that, that's become a part of music, I think, is, is now, you know, it's like cutting out the middleman. Before, I think, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, making a video was expensive and it was a gamble because you didn't know if MTV or BET or the various we'll all places would pick it up. So it was, it was a costly gamble for a lot of us. But now it's like, it, 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 it it's so direct. You. you have to do it. Yeah. If you don't do it, right. you're fucking yourself. You're gonna get forgot. Exactly. What, what's 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 uh, the craziest video for you guys that, that you guys have done that like when you look back on it, you said this was gonna fucking pop. That we shot that yeah. didn't pop, or that we think is gonna pop the most. That you thought would pop the most. Hmm. Or maybe it did pop. I'm really excited about this last video. Yeah. Girl, you're on my I know that sounds like plug-in cliche. No, but like I mean, check out the new video, but <laughs> but it is. But popping. to me, I had a lot of fun. We shot that in Hollywood. We shot it on a rooftop. We invited all our friends. I'm sure you got the invite, but it's all good. I was in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, Otherwise, I would have been there for sure. Fair enough. Next time, yes. we'll do another. Hell Just yeah. had a bunch of friends, had a bunch of liquor, and I had a good time. So. A good time's always a good time. And I just be, like, sorry. <laughs> no, it's always good in a video to capture that. Yeah, and I like when people can see you having fun. Yeah. That, that to me is the most important thing. Yeah, because most, a lot of videos, it's a lot of acting, just like a movie. It's it's seldom when you catch those those rare moments where it's just like, motherfuckers right. really hanging it's out. Raw. Yeah. And we're musicians, not actors. So. Right. Kind of difficult you, you you ever feel like just directing the video yourself um or have you already that's essentially what we do i mean we work we tight with director. our friend migs um he's like our director go-to all the time right so we're hands-on with the with like the treatments we're hands-on with like what's gonna happen locations right so it's pretty fun i mean it's diy as fuck so. yeah man it, you know, you guys are on a fucking fantastic run. Thank you. You guys got to keep that shit up. And definitely, you got to hit me for that next video. For sure. Word up, man. Hey, Thank so you. this is always the last question in the smoke box. Yes. You know, and, you know, I say this repetitiously because, you know, I do get shit on if I don't ask this. And, you know, why not? What, okay. what's, what's your favorite strain that you like to smoke out, whether it's... Uh, concentrate um flower or whatever you know what, what's what's your favorite strain headband headband mm -hmm. nice i haven't heard that in a long time <coughs> i've heard a couple people say headband in the, in the smoke box it's a very nostalgic strain it's me. a very tasty strain yeah but i smoked a lot of it in high school and then but I barely smoke it now. I gotta get my hands on it. It's hard to get the hands on it. A lot of mm -hmm. people say they have it in their in their shops, but they don't necessarily have it in their shops. Right. You know. You know. I, okay. One more question. That usually okay. is the last question. But okay. <laughs> you know, somebody wanted to ask me, ask me to ask you this. Okay. Was, what was? When was the first time you got high? What was the? What was like your? The first person that smoked you out. I was. Uh, I lived in Costa Rica for a little bit. I was on the beach, first week getting there. I lived there for half a year. And uh, we were smoking a J on the beach, by a fire. I had smoked twice before, but it didn't. I didn't get high. Hmm. It was one of those situations. Third time on the beach, got high under the stars. Boom. I don't know, it's pretty, pretty classic. That's cool, Costa Rica for the first time you yes. got high. That's yes. not bad. Yeah. Right on, man. Hey, this has been another smoke box. Thank right you, Be here. Real. Be Real TV. Appreciate it. Carter, right here. Air. Make sure you go check out their shit. Get it. You already probably got it. I mean, I hope. But we're just going to say <laughs> you do it anyway. Um, make sure you cop these funky field tips and uh, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, thank you for watching. Let me welcome you to the smoke box. Windows up, couple in rotation, hot boxed out.